Shabbat Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give praise to Ahaya Ashere Ahaya and our Adono Yache Mishiaka and our Mother Ruaka Kadoshi. We are thankful for this time with you all, and today we're going to be looking at the church and how it's being built so that we may have understanding of what is required of us to be a part of this building, fitly framed together by Adono Yache Mishiaka. Right. Firstly, to identify what the tower is, we're going to be going into the Shepherd of Hermas, Parable 9, starting at chapter 13, verse 1. But the tower, say I, what is it? The tower, said he, why this is the church. Okay, so the tower is the church. And Hermas is getting shown a vision of how the church is being built. Uh, Hermas, Parable 9. Going from, was that, chapter 1? Yeah, first, chapter right. 1, verse 1. Yeah, we're reading the parable. After I had written down the commandments and parables of the shepherd, the angel of repentance, he came to me and saith to me, I wish to show thee all things that the Holy Spirit, which spake with thee in the form of the church, showed unto thee, for that spirit is the son of Elohim. Now notice, the angel called the church the son of Elohim. That's because she's his wife. Right. She's there on his behalf. That shows even in the spirit, the church is still respected as the wife of her husband by evidence of the angel calling her after her husband's name. She was a representation of her husband. That's right. This is why the scripture in Sirach says you shall know a man by his household, right. by his children, mm -hmm. and by his wife. Because you can see how a man is, how righteous a man is, by how his house operates. Yes. But well, when thou wast weaker in the flesh... It was not declared unto thee through an angel. But when thou wast enabled through the Spirit, and didst grow mighty in thy strength, so that thou couldst even see an angel, then at length was manifested unto thee through the church, the building of the tower, in fair and seemly manner hast thou seen all things, as it were by a virgin. But now thou seest, being instructed by an angel, Though by the same Spirit, yet must thou learn everything more accurately from me. For to this end also was I appointed by the glorious angel to dwell in thy house, that thou mightest see all things mightily, and nothing terrify even as before. And he took me away into Arcadia, to a certain rounded mountain, to set me on the top of the mountain, and show me a great plain, and round the plain twelve mountains. All right. The mountains having each a different appearance. Okay. The first was black as soot. The second was bare without vegetation. The third was thorny and full of briars. The fourth had the vegetation half withered, the upper part of the grass green, but the part by the roots withered. And some of the grass became withered whenever the sun had scorched it. And the fifth mountain had green grass and was rugged. And the sixth mountain was full of clefts throughout, some small and some great. And the cleft had vegetation, but the grass was not very luxuriant, but rather as if it had been withered. The seventh mountain had smiling vegetation, and the whole mountain was in a thriving condition. A cattle and birds of every kind did feed upon that mountain. And the more the cattle and the birds did feed, so much the more did the herbage of that mountain flourish. The eighth mountain was full of springs, and every kind of creature of Ahaya did drink of the springs of that mountain. The ninth mountain had no water at all, and it was entirely desert, and it had in it wild beasts and deadly reptiles, which destroy mankind. The tenth mountain had very large trees, and was umbragious throughout. And the word umbragious means to be shaded. Hence, you have the sheep under the trees resting and shaded. And beneath the shade lay sheep resting and feeding. The eleventh mountain was thickly wooded all over, and the trees whereon were very productive, decked with diverse kinds of fruits, so that one seeing them would desire to eat of their fruits. The twelfth mountain was altogether white, and its aspect was cheerful, and the mountain was most beauteous in itself. And now we're going to be looking into the 12 mountains, all right? Let's start in Hermas, parable 9, chapter 17, verse 1. All right. Now then, sir, explain to me concerning the mountains. 
Wherefore are their forms diverse, the one from the other, and various? Listen, saith he, these twelve mountains are twelve tribes that inhabit the whole world. To these tribes, then the son of Elohim was preached by the apostles. See, the, the son of Elohim was preached to the whole world. Right. Because even Paul said in Romans 10, have they not heard? Right. The sound went out to the whole world, okay? But explain to me, sir, why they are various, these mountains, and each has a different appearance. Listen, saith he. These twelve tribes which inhabit the whole world are twelve nations, and they are various in understanding and in mind. So you see, he's talking about the mindsets, okay? As various then as thou sawest these mountains to be, such also are the varieties in the minds of these nations. <laughs> the varieties and the minds of these nations. So this is not about the twelve tribes of Israel. This is about the twelve varieties of the minds of the world. That's right. All right? And such their understanding. And I will show unto thee the conduct of each. So this is for us to understand the twelve types of people that hear the gospel in the world. All right? Let's continue You're looking at the church and how it's being built. Let's pick up in the parable 9 of Shepherd of Hermas. And in the middle of the plain he showed me a great white rock rising up from the plain. So you had the twelve mountains and in the middle of the plain a great white rock. Okay. And the rock was loftier than the mountains, being four square, so that it could contain the whole world. Now this rock was ancient, and had a gate hewn out of it. But the gate seemed to me to have been hewed out quite recently. And the gate glistened beyond the brightness of the sun, so that it, I marveled at the brightness of the gate. So there was a rock, an ancient big rock, and a new glistening gate in the midst of these 12 mountains, all right? Yeah. Let's look okay. to see what that rock and that gate is in uh, chapter 12, verse 1 to uh, 4. Chapter 12, verse 1. First of all, sir, say I, explain this to me. The rock and the gate, what is it? This rock says he, and the gate is the son of Elohim. How, sir, say I, is the rock ancient, but the gate recent? Listen, said he, and understand, foolish man. The son of Elohim is older than all his creation, so that he became the father's advisor in his creation. Therefore also he is ancient, but the gate, why is it recent, sir, say I? Because, said he, he was made manifest in the last days of the consummation. Therefore the gate was made recent, that they which are to be saved may enter through it into the kingdom of Elohim. Didst thou see, saith he, that the stone which came through the gate have gone to the building of the tower, but those which came not through it were cast away again to their own place? I saw, sir, say I. Thus saith he, no one shall enter into the kingdom of Elohim except he receive the name of his son. Yache. This is key, brothers and sisters. One cannot make it into the church, the true church, without the name Yahweh. That's right. There's none other name given under heaven by which men may be saved. This was an Acts 4 and 12. Right. And then he gave him a name that's above all names, as uh, was it Philippians, Philippians 2 and 9. Yache. This is the way his name is pronounced, and this is the name that will strengthen all those of all nations that seek Ahaya Alahayam to keep his commandments and bear the fruits of his spirit. That's right. Now that we know who that ancient rock and that new gate is, let's go back to chapter 2 now to continue reading about what Hermes is being shown in the building of the church. Uh, chapter 2 verse 3. And around the gate stood twelve virgins. The four then that stood at the corner seemed to me <clears throat> to be more glorious than the rest. Right. But the others likewise were glorious, and they stood at the four quarters of the gate, and virgins stood in pairs between them. All right, we have Yache the gate, the son of Elohim, right. and let's see who the virgins are. Let's jump to same parable 9, chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, please. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins and of the women that are clothed in black garments. Here saith he the names of the more powerful virgins. Those that are stationed at the corners, the first is faith, the second continence, the third power, and the fourth long-suffering. 
But the other station between them have these names, simplicity, guilelessness, purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, love. All right. And these are the daughters of Allah. All right. Okay. Now we're going back to chapter 2, verse 4, continuing reading about what's going on in the building of this tower. And they were clothed in linen tunics and girt about in seemly fashion, having their right shoulders free as if they intended to carry some burden. Thus were they prepared, for they were very cheerful and eager. After I had seen these things, I marveled in myself at the greatness and the glory of what I was seeing. And again I was perplexed concerning the virgins, that delicate as they were, they stood up like men, as if they intended to carry the whole heaven. So you see how strong the fruits of the Spirit are? Right. <laughs> these fruits are powerful. All right. And the shepherd saith unto me, Why questionest thou within thyself, and art perplexed, and bringest sadness on thyself? For whatsoever things thou canst not comprehend, attempt them not, if thou art prudent. But entreat Ahia, that thou mayest receive understanding to comprehend them. What is behind thee thou canst not see? But what is before thee thou beholdest? The things, therefore, which thou canst not see, let alone, and trouble not thyself about them. But the things which thou seest, these, Master, and be not over curious about the rest. But I will explain unto thee all things whatsoever I shall show thee. Have an eye, therefore, of what remaineth. I saw six men come, tall and glorious, and alike in appearance, and they summoned the multitude of men. And the others also which came were tall men and handsome and powerful. And the six men ordered them to build a tower above the gate. And there arose a great noise from those men who had come to build the tower, as they ran hither and thither round the gate. So there were six men and then a multitude of men, all powerful men, right? See, let's look at chapter 12 or 6 to see who these men are. Didst thou see, saith he, the multitude that is building the tower? I saw it, sir, say I. They, saith he, are all glorious angels. With these then Ahia is walled around. But the gate is the son of Elohim. There is, there is this one entrance only to Ahia. No one then shall enter in unto him otherwise than through his son. Right, and that's why we have to believe in Yahweh. That's right. Didst thou see, saith he, the six men and the glorious and mighty man in the midst of them? Him that walked about the tower and rejected the stones from the building. I saw him, sir, say I. The glorious man said, if he is the son of Elohim, and those six are the glorious angels who guard him on the right hand and on the left. Those are the archangels. All right. Of these glorious angels, not one, say if he, shall enter in unto Elohim without him. Whosoever shall not receive his name shall not enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Again, admonition: have to receive that name or else we shall not enter. All right, going back to chapter 3, verse 2 now, picking up because we have seen where Hermas was astonished when he saw the might of the virgins. Right, he seen they were delicate because working the fruits is delicate, but it's powerful. All right, mighty. All right, this is uh, chapter 3, verse 2 of parable 9. For the virgins standing round the gate told the men to hasten to build the tower. Now the virgins had spread out their hands as if they would take something from the men. And the six men ordered stones to come up from a certain deep place and to go to the building of the tower. And there went up ten stones square and polished, not hewn from a quarry. And the six men called to the virgins and ordered them to carry all the stones which should go into the building of the tower and to pass through the gate, and to hand them to the men that were about to build the tower. And the virgins laid the first ten stones that rose up out of the deep on each other, and they carried them together stone by stone. And just as they stood together around the gate, in that order they carried them that seemed to be strong enough, and had stooped under the corners of the stone, while the others stooped at the sides of the stone. And so they carried all the stones, and they carried them right through the gate, that they were ordered, and handed them to the men of the tower. And these took the stones and built it. 
Now the building of the tower was upon the great rock, and above the gate those ten stones then were joined together, and then covered the whole rock. And these formed a foundation for the building of the tower, and the rock and the gate supported the whole tower. Right, so the rock and the gate, which is Yahweh, supports the whole tower, and the stones is for the foundation. We're going to see what that is as we continue going. And after the ten stones, other twenty-five stones came up from the deep, and these were fitted into the building of the tower, being carried by the virgins like the former. And after these thirty-five stones came up, and these likewise were fitted into the tower, and after these came up, other forty stones, and these all were put into the building of the tower. So four rows were made in the foundation of the tower. All right. Let's look at chapter 15, verse 4 to see what these stones were. But the stones, sir, say I, that came from the deep and were fitted into the building, who are they? The first, saith he, even the ten that were placed in the foundation are the first generation. The twenty-five are the second generation of righteous men. And the thirty-five are Elohim's prophets and his ministers. The forty are apostles and teachers of the preaching of the son of Elohim. So you can see how this very book and these records that we have are the foundation. Right. Telling of all the righteousness and all the exhortations of these the righteous right. men. That's why we really cleave to the law and the testimony continually to get understanding and be guided that we may be founded upon the rock of Yahweh. That's right. Now let's go back to chapter 4, verse 4. And the stones ceased coming up from the deep, and the builders likewise ceased for a little. And again the six men ordered the multitude of the people to bring in stones from the mountain for the building of the tower. They were brought in accordingly from all the mountains of various colors, shaped by the men, and were handed to the virgins. And the virgins carried them right through the gate and handed them in for the building of the tower. And when the various stones were placed in the building, they became all alike and white, and they lost their various colors. So you can see the 12 mountains, that is, the different mindsets of the people in the world that are being grafted in. And notice how when the virgins take them in, they go in no problem. Right. Okay, continue. But some stones were handed in by the men for the building, and these did not become bright. But just as they were placed, such likewise they were found. For they were not handed in by the virgins, nor had they been carried in through the gate. These stones then were unsightly in the building of the tower. So without the virgins and without the gate. That lets us know that's without Yahweh and without the twelve holy spirits. Right. They didn't fit in. Continue. Then the six men, seeing the stones that were unsightly in the building, ordered them to be removed and carried below into their own place whence they were brought. And they say to the men who were bringing the stones in, Abstain from your parts altogether from handing in stones for the building, but place them by the tower, that the virgins may carry them through the gate, and hand them in for the building. For if, say they, they be not carried in through the gate by the hands of these virgins, they cannot change their colors. Labor not, therefore, say they, in vain. So we see, if they don't go in through Yahweh's name, right. the gate, and have the twelve Holy Spirits bring them in, which shown that they clothe the Holy Spirits, it's in vain for them right. to enter the church because they won't fit in. Right. So that lets us know we have to have the name of Yahweh and the twelve Holy Spirits to enter the kingdom. This is why Ahaya has us exhort on that constantly. Right. Yes. Thank you. And the building was finished on that day, yet was not the tower finally completed. So they finished the work for that day, but the tower isn't completed because we're still heading to the end of the world here. Even today, the tower is still being built. For it was to be carried up still higher, and there was a succession in the building. And the six men ordered the builders to retire for a short time, all of them, and to rest. But the virgins, they ordered not to retire from the tower. And me thought the virgins were left to guard the tower. You see how powerful these fruits right. of the Spirit are. These fruits of the Spirit are God in the house. Right. All right, verse 2. All right. And after all had retired and rested, I say to the shepherd, How is it, sir, say I, that the building of the tower was not completed? The tower, he said, cannot be finally completed 
until its master come and test this building. For if any stones be found crumbling, he may change them. For the tower is being built according to its will. So we see how serious this is. There's no getting by. Right. I'll corroborate this with the book of Revelations, the seven churches. The seven churches show the seven ways you can be in the gospel and still fall away. Right. Even the church of Philadelphia, which was doing everything well, he told them, continue in it. Right. And we all have to continue because he is making sure this house is pure. I would fain know, sir, say I. What is this building of this tower, and concerning the rock and the gate, and the mountains and the virgins, and the stones that came up from the deep and were not shaped, but went just as they were into the building? And wherefore ten stones were first placed in the foundations, then twenty-five, and thirty-five, then forty, and concerning the stones that had gone to the building, and were removed again and put away in their own place? Concerning all these things set my soul at rest, sir. <laughs> and explain them to me. If, saith he, thou be not found possessed of an idle curiosity, then shalt thou know all things. So we see how our heart has to be in the right place. Right. Can't just want to know just to know. Right. Or our heart has to be sincere, wanting it for the right reasons. That's right. Then things will be revealed unto us. For after a few days we shall come here. And thou shalt see the sequel that overtaketh this tower, and shalt understand all the parables accurately. And after a few days we came to the place where we had set, and he saith to me, Let us go to the tower. For the owner of the tower cometh to inspect it. And we came to the tower, and there was no one at all by it, save the virgins alone. And the shepherd asked the virgins whether the master of the tower had arrived, and they said, that he would be there directly to inspect the building. And behold, after a little, while I see an array of many men coming, and in the midst a man of such lofty stature, that he overtopped the tower. So there's this big man coming with a bunch of angels around him, right? right. And the six men who superintended the building walked with him on the right hand and on the left. And all they that worked at the building were with him and many other glorious attendants around him. And the virgins that watched the tower ran up and kissed him, and they began to walk by his side round the tower. So the virgins are walking with him as he's inspecting. And that man inspected the building so carefully that he felt each single stone, and he held a rod to his hand and struck each single stone that was built in. And when he smote, some of the stones became black as soot, others mildewed, others cracked, Others broke off short. Others became neither white nor black. Others rough and not fitted in with the other stones. And others with many spots. These were the very aspects of the stones which were found unsound for the building. So he ordered all these to be removed from the tower and to be placed by the side of the tower and other stones to be brought and put into their place. And the builders asked him, from what mountain he desired stones to be brought and put into their place, and he would not have them brought from the mountains, but ordered them to be brought from a certain plain that was nigh at hand. So we have a foundation of understanding how the church is being built. We see the six archangels are the ones directing the rest of the holy angels to bring the stones, and all the stones which are people have to be brought through the gate, which is through the name Yache. And they have to be brought in by the 12 Holy Spirits. Right. So that shows we have to have the name Yahweh and bear the fruits of the Holy Spirits in order to enter in and be one in the tower. If we don't come in that way, we're not fit. We're not going to be in unison and we'll be taken out. And we see also that this tower is going to be perfect. So they're trying, they're testing everything to make sure that all stones, which are people, are worthy of this calling. So we're going to pause right there and we're going to come back at another time and finish this. This is wonderful already. We'll get back to you all. All right. I have you magnified. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.